What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about prefetching with a table view. Before we dig into things, start by dropping a like down below. If you're new here, welcome, hit subscribe, almost at 60k, and let's dig into Xcode and talk about prefetching. Now, prefetching, obviously, the name implies what it does, but we're going to talk about it specifically in the context of a table view. So, let's create an application. We'll stick with that app template. I'm going to go ahead and uh, creatively call this prefetch table. We're going to stick with UI kit Swift, of course, save the project wherever you'd like. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and expand my window here. Let's collapse this right panel. And let me also give this a run in a 13 pro. Now the concept of prefetching is a general one where you can prefetch data that's available for a particular use case. But something that a lot of people don't realize is that table views out of the box come with a way to allow for prefetching behavior. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder here called example and all the code we're gonna be writing today and files that we create will go inside of here. I have taken the liberty of writing out a basic table view uh, within a controller that I just copy and pasted for the sake of saving some time. So if I just go ahead and give this a run, you'll notice we have a basic table with a bunch of labels showing various pieces of text. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be showing a random photo in each of these cells, and then we're gonna further extend it with a prefetching design. So right now we've got a pretty basic table in here. We're setting it up with some constraints. We've got the table view data source and delegate implemented, nothing more than a trivial table view. So let's actually go ahead and create a cell and assign a random image to it, and then we'll extend it to prefetching. So I have this URL here, which will give us a random photo every single time. So I am going to copy this, and we're gonna create two files that we are gonna work with. So the first one will be a brand new file. It's gonna be an empty file. And this is going to be our view model that's responsible for downloading our image. It's going to be a class view model. We'll have a empty constructor. We're gonna have a function in here to download an image. And inside of this guy, we're gonna actually be using this URL. So let me go ahead and just expand this while we write our code. Now, inside of here, we're gonna do nothing more than just download this URL. So we'll create a URL of type URL. We're gonna paste on in this string and we're gonna unwrap it. And before we write out the rest of this function, let's just create the other file and we'll go in order. We're gonna create a new file, Coco Touch class, and we want a custom cell that we're gonna to use to show a photo. So I'll just go ahead and call this a photo cell, just like that. This cell is going to have a bunch of things in it as well, but let's go ahead and actually finish up that view model before we jump there. So here in our download image, we're gonna have a completion handler and this is going to be an escaping closure that's going to return a UI image optional and returning void. And once we have our URL, we can go ahead and say, we're gonna create a URL session data task. So we'll say data task with this URL. And inside of here, all we really care about is the data. If we have the data, we can create a image and return it via the callback. Now, because images are a part of UI kit, we need to do it on the main queue. So here we can simply say image is a UI image with data and finally pass it back. Now, this is a pretty basic way to download an image. Let's not forget to call resume. And one thing that we should probably take care of here is we don't want to have to download this image over and over when we scroll the table up and down. So we're going to want to cache it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cache in here. So we'll say cached image, and this will be a UI image. So before we even try to download and go down the code path, we'll say if let image, if we have a cached image, we can simply stop this function call and pass back said image via our callback. And of course, down here, we want to actually hold on to the cached image 
or the downloaded image, I should say. So we'll go ahead and assign it down there. So if we hit Command B, everything should be building. Looks like we've got an error somewhere here. So let's go ahead and find it. So it looks like I've got an error in here because we actually didn't finish writing this class out. So let me actually go ahead and do the table view now. So, or the cell, I should say. So we're going to want to override the constructor. So we'll go ahead and pass in that. We'll want the required one as well. We're also going to want prepare for reuse since we will want to clean up the cell whenever it is preparing to be reused when it's dequeued. And then we're going to want to configure this with a view model. And you guessed it, it's going to be the view model we have created. Now inside of here, we can simply say view model, we can download the image. And once we have an image view created in two seconds, we're going to assign this image to it. Let's go ahead and create said image. So up here, we're just going to create a photo. I'm going to make it an image view. And we're going to also use constraints to lay the sky out. Let's just go ahead and configure a few things on it. So we'll go ahead and do an image view. We're going to return set image view. Now, the few things that we want to do is we're going to clip to bounds. We're also going to set its content mode to be scale aspect fill. And we are also going to say that translates auto resizing mask into constraints is false. Now that we've got our photo defined up here, we can go ahead and add it like so. And we can say add constraints. In our prepare for reuse, we're going to nil out the image on this guy. And in our add constraints, we can simply add our constraints. So we're going to say ns layout constraint. Whoops, that's not what we're looking for. We want this one here. We're going to activate a few constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and say the width of our photo is going to be 300. The height will also be 300. And we need a few more here. We're going to say that the center x anchor is going to be equal to the center of our content view, like so. And we need two more. We'll say the top anchor is a constraint equal to the content views top anchor. Let's see, content view, not mode. Top anchor, we'll add some spacing with a constant. And our last one, we can get away with copy and pasting most of this. We are just going to change this to be bottom anchor. We'll also change this here to be bottom and this one as well. If you go ahead and hit Command B, everything should be building. Before we can give it a run and actually see our images, we're going to say Dispatch Q, Main, Async. And here we're going to say the photos image will be the image we've downloaded. Now, don't forget, we still need to register the cell and change what we are dequeuing. So back in our controller, we're going to register uh, our cell, and I believe I called it a photo cell, just like that. Down in our table view function, we are going to make sure we try to dequeue that particular cell. And we're also going to say cell.configure with a particular view model. Now our view models at the moment are basically just labels or text strings. So we actually need to change this as well. So for our particular map here, we're going to go ahead and create and return a view model. Go ahead and give this a run and let's see what we actually get in our simulator. So we expect to see some images just like that. Now, a couple issues going on. First and foremost, the images are not completely random. The reason they're not random is because the service actually caches the various sized images. So we are going to actually create a random size. So I'm going to say int random between 100 and perhaps 350. So we're going to pass in this size instead of 300 by 300. Go ahead and give it a run and we should see a random image every single time. Now one thing you'll notice is that things actually load a little slowly as we scroll, which is kind of expected, right? When the cell is dequeued, that's when we actually start downloading stuff. And that can kind of lead to a poor user experience because the user is kind of sitting there looking at an empty cell. So this is where we're going to start talking about prefetching. So there is actually 
a prefetch related delegate that is baked directly into both table views and collection views. So if you try to assign, there is a prefetch data source, which is pretty interesting. So the prefetch data source is very similar to the data source with the exception that it asks you to specify two additional protocols. So if I click into this, you'll notice that there is a table view function to prefetch rows at a particular index path. And then there's also a related function to cancel prefetching, supposedly if the table view feels that prefetching is no longer needed. So if I go ahead and copy this function, we can start to talk about what we actually need to do in here. So you can see that we get some index paths, which is a collection of index paths. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say our indices are going to be our index paths dot map. And perhaps I'll do the dollar zero dot row and we're going to say joined. And I just want to start by printing these out so we can all see what the heck is going on here. In other words, when is this function actually called? Because it's quite interesting. So if I go ahead and give that a run, you'll notice inside of here, we don't actually have any of those prefetches called, but the second I start scrolling, you'll notice that they start to print. Now the order that they print is basically determined by the table of view proactively in terms of which cells, which index path it feels need to be prefetched right before they're scrolled on screen. So what we could actually do is kick off the download early so that by the time the cell is dequeued, we actually have the image ready to go. So we can say for index path in index paths, we're going to get the view model, which will be our view model at the index path dot row. And we can say view model dot download. Now, initially, this callback was non nullable. So we're going to go ahead and change it because we don't really care for that closure here. So we're going to get rid of this optionality. And we're going to make this whole thing optional just like that. So we need to adjust our signature here as well as here. And we should be able to build. Now, one other thing that's important is we don't want to kick off redundant downloads. So for example, if the prefetch start, but the user scrolls really fast, we don't want this function to continuously be called and download if a download is already in progress. So we're going to go ahead and introduce another property in here. And it's going to be is downloading. We'll start off as false. And here what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to guard that we're not already downloading. And if we pass this, we can of course go ahead and set this to true. And if we call this function and say, hey, we're not already downloading, and we come into the else, meaning the downloads in progress, what we're going to do is hold on to the callback in another property. So I can go ahead and paste that right there. And here we're gonna go ahead and say self.callback will be the completion handler. And the reason we're doing this is down here, once we have the image, we can just call this callback with the image. And we can also go ahead and say self.callback is nil, effectively, effectively nilling it out. So now if I go ahead and give this a run, what you'll notice is as I scroll, things are actually preloaded and they're much quicker. If you, if you notice now as I'm scrolling, everything's already loaded by the time that cell particularly comes into view. And what's going on is it's actually prefetching. It's prefetching, it's also caching, and it leads to a much, much better user experience. This is a common pattern used by, of course, large scale applications, things like Instagram and Gmail and any, any application where there's a long scrollable feed of any type of content, be it posts, be it TikTok with videos, et cetera, et cetera. So the last thing I want to do here is in our view controller for prefetching, I am going to go ahead and simply print out prefetching and the index path row so we can actually visualize when this prefetch is actually kicked off. Let me go ahead and clear this out. And as I start to scroll, you're going to notice a bunch more of these prefetching calls actually get queued up and they actually get started. And of course, we're going to continue here. 
And if that's basically prefetching in a nutshell. So I know this video got a little longer than I actually intended, but prefetching, the prefetching aspect of this is quite trivial. It's a lot of the other stuff that is time consuming, like extending your view model, make sure you're not redundantly doing things, such as downloading images in this case. But the prefetching APIs related to table view are quite nice. Related to this, there is actually a collection view prefetch uh, protocol as well, which behaves very, very similar. So if we actually open it up, you'll notice there are two related functions, just like that table view. So here it's in objective C actually. So similarly, prefetch items for index paths and cancel prefetching for index paths. So in terms of cancellation, which we haven't implemented here, you can imagine if the user has backgrounded the app and we want to preserve that user's bandwidth for any reason, we can say for all the view models that are currently downloading something and not done, go ahead and pause those downloads or go ahead and cancel those downloads. I'm not going to digress and go further into that particular implementation since I feel it's mostly self-explanatory. Let me know in the comments down below if you prefetched any of your own applications, how you handle caching networking in general, do you use a library, do you write your own, etc, etc. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, almost at 60k, keeping this channel going and growing together. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.